The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Friday morning, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. We got markets in positive territory to kick off Friday trading so far. S&P is positive by 21 points. That's almost 8 tenths percent in the green, trading above 2800, 2801. NASDAQ up 51 points, trading at 8650. You got the Dow up 170 points, trading 23,507. Oil up 53 cents, trading above 17 at 1704. Gold contract up almost $10 at 1754. Silver up 11 cents at 1547. We'll start things off, we'll jump over to the the VIX this morning. VIX back under 40 as the market inches higher, 39.72 on that volatility index. Start things off, let's jump over to the charts. We'll start it off with the Dow. 23,513. You see the action yesterday reaching highs at about 11 a.m. of 23,769. The Dow trades down more than 500 points from that price level. 23,159, the low. That low taking place at about 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Markets up a bit from there, 23,508. NASDAQ 100, 86.51, almost made it up to 8,800 last night, down to about 8,500 overnight, uh, excuse me, almost made it to 8,800 yesterday, down to 8,500 overnight, right in the middle of that range at 86.53. S&Ps we covered a bit, back above 2,800, 2,802, the highs yesterday, 2,836, quite a cascade. You go from 2,836 down about 75 points to 27.60, the low's taking place at about 1 a.m., 2755. So you're a solid 45 S&P points above that price level. There's your crude oil chart. Yesterday, climbing above $18. We've seemed to have been bouncing around between about 16 and 18, right square in the middle of that range at 1702. Gold contract, 1754. The highs yesterday, 1763. Down yesterday afternoon to a low of 1740. We were just up at about 1760 over the last couple of hours. And the Euro US dollar, even since about 3 a.m., look at that trade, trading from 107.27 to actually above 108 in the last few minutes, currently trading at 107.95. In terms of what else you have happening across the market, checking in, there we go. So we're gonna love doing the program at 8.30 every morning. U.S. durable goods, why not jump over to this? This is what we get at 8.30, lots of numbers. Yesterday, we got weekly jobless claims day 30. This morning, durable good orders plunging 14.4% in March. An 11.9% drop was expected, so even worse than they were thinking. And see no real reaction on that number. s and is up about 21. You see the action there, 8.30 bar, pretty low volatility with 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. In terms of stocks making moves so far this morning, jumping into d individual equity names, it is earnings season. American Express out with their numbers, $1.98 a share, with gap earnings at 41 cents a share. The estimate was only $1.43. The financial services company increased its credit provisions to $2.6 billion from $809 million of a year earlier and said a spending decline by customers began in late February and accelerated in March. AXP, quite a beat though for their numbers. And you see the action there, trading up to almost $85 from a close yesterday of 82.46. But pairing some of those gains, that conference call beginning at 8, 8.30 a.m. So that conference call beginning just now and trading off a bit, AXP, on quite a beat. Verizon beat consensus, est consensus estimates by three cents a share. Quarterly earnings of a buck 26. Revenue below forecast, however, and the company cut its full year outlook. Verizon said it had a strong start to 2020 prior to the pandemic and that it expects to emerge from the crisis stronger. VZ is their symbol. So you see the action there. Not sure how real of a tick that is to below 56, but we had their earnings coming out at 730 and we have the 
conference call beginning right at 8.30, but pretty much within about 20 pennies where we were yesterday. This stock bouncing around a bit. I mean, you put this on a longer time frame, right from 62 down to 48, right back in the middle of that range, 57, 59. I happen to be playing with some long-term charts yesterday, just for some context, quite a trading range this thing has had, right? Check out that channel. Not to Bud Rolfs, the channel master, man. Um, this is going back, this is a monthly, to even 2004, the peaks, and 2009, the troughs, a lot of them lining up together right in the middle of that range. We did bounce right off that level though in those peak lows at about 48 to $50 Verizon, 57.59 on their numbers. Intel had their earnings, $1.45 a share, beating the estimate of a buck 28. Chipmaker's revenue also beating forecast. The company's current quarter forecast was below estimates, however, and said it would not update its full year outlook due to uncertainty surrounding the coronavirus outbreak. Intel, how about some longer term context? Shorter time frame, there's the drop off from above 59, 59.04 yesterday. Their numbers right after the bell last night, 55.26 initially, currently trading at 56.05. Just out of curiosity, AMD, their numbers trading down probably on that news as well from 55.90 yesterday to below 54, right now back at 55.14. E-Trade, E-Trade missed estimates by 19 cents a share with earnings of 72 cents a share. Revenue also missed forecast. The online brokerage firm, which is in the process of being bought by Morgan Stanley, was hurt by factors related to the pandemic as well as merger-related expenses and its provision for credit losses. ETFC is their symbol. You see the volatility after the bell last night, 38.24, basically flat from yesterday's close. Continental Resources, talk about the energy sector. The energy, energy producer has halted most of its oil production in North Dakota, notified customers it would not supply crude oil at current prices. There you go, folks. Why are you going to be supplying oil when it's trading at $17 and even potentially negative territory? CLR, trading a bit higher as oil has rebounded, but for some context here, from $35 down to $7 recently. Pearson reported a 5% drop in first quarter revenue as the education products company is hit by school closures around the globe. Yeah, how do you sell as much when it's online? Maybe that's how you do it. The company has seen a significant increase in the user of its digital products. However, um, if they have a path to profitability online, this would really be expediting that. There's Pearson, $5.58. You're going to open basically even on that. Tesla. Its prices for two variants of its China-made Model 3 sedans after China officials cut electric vehicle subsidies. So less subsidies, Tesla taking that, passing it right on to the customer in China. Tesla, I mean, you wanna talk about a rocket ship lately. <clears throat> Check that out from the low that we made on March 18th, $350. We're now double that to 705. We're gonna to open today higher about $10 to 715. There's your action. We were below 700, $715 on Tesla. L Brands filed a complaint against private equity firm Sycamore Partners for trying to pull out of a deal to buy the company's Victoria's Secret unit. Sycamore wanted a lower price due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, but failed the lawsuit after L Brands, L Brands declined to renegotiate. L Brands, this one, really hit hard lately. Uh, that was the news of the deal potentially falling through at $8.80, but we were up for some context at $25 before all this pain started. Stay tuned, folks. Coming back after the break, see what else If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, Prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We got markets inching up a bit over the last 10 minutes. S&P is positive by 25 points now at 2805. We're up about four points since we started the program. Dow up 191 now. Checking back into headlines of the day. Last night, you had the House passing the 484 billion dollar bill to boost small businesses and hospitals that gets sent to President Trump. Hopefully that approved and added to the government's unprecedented emergency spending to respond to the health and economic crisis by the pandemic. That's going to be small business aid, hospital grants and coronavirus testing. Jumping back into equities, Boeing planning to cut 787 Dreamliner production in half and announced job cuts when it reports first quarter earnings according to a Bloomberg report. Boeing is due to report first quarter results on April 29th, five days from right now, next Wednesday. Boeing shares particularly hit hard over all of this, dealing with their own woes in the 737 MAX, but dealing with a complete shutdown of the skies essentially worldwide. Boeing falling from about 350 down to 89, up to 186, back to 137 today. Quite a rock and roll ride for Boeing shares. Hertz is working with debt restructuring advisors on options to boost its finances, according to a Reuters report, as the coronavirus outbreak slashes demand for rental cars. Hertz already in a tough business, right, rental cars. But talk about a fall off from $21 almost to $3. We're gonna to open today at about $3.80. Some longer term context from there. You see a general trend going back three years, 27. The recent high of 20, $3. Tough run um, as they try and shore up finances to get through this. But even if you do, is the future really there? So DraftKings, they're going to be uh, making their NASDAQ debut today after the sports betting company completed a $3.3 billion reverse merger with bank check company Diamond Eagle Associates, DKNG. Let's see if we got some action on that uh, pre-market. How does that work? Now, we're not loading anything yet, so that'll start trading at 9.30, I assume. J.C. Penney is in advanced bankruptcy talks with lenders. According to the journal, the talks are said to focus on loans that would allow the retailer to continue operating during a court-supervised bankruptcy filing. J.C.P., I mean, 27 cents. We were at 20 cents last week, and we're going to open at about 23 
There's your volatility there as that company looks to be out of business. United Airlines, United will require all flight attendants to wear a face covering or mask while on duty beginning today. The flight attendants union welcomed the move, but is asking the passengers be required to do the same. Uh, I imagine, you know, this is going to be the type of stuff. It's not back to normal when the, the economy opens back up. It's going to be a shift of things, especially until maybe we have a vaccine or treatment where this is eradicated. And uh, mask is the easiest way to make sure that people aren't spreading germs, um, especially the asymptomatic spreading that could be going on. This story, interesting. So Google, uh, they are cutting, why not? I have the headline here, I was reading. They're gonna cut the marketing budgets by as much as half. Directors, directors warned of hiring freezes. Company is planning to slash its marketing budgets by as much as half. Directors were told that hiring freezes for both full-time and contract workers are taking place. The cut. The cuts represent a more drastic move than their CEO originally described just a week ago. One email about the cuts went out to marketing employees this week, noting the budget cuts and new hiring freeze for full-time and contract employees. There are budget cuts and hiring freezes happening across marketing and across Google, said one message from a global director sent to employees Wednesday. We, along with the rest of the marketing, have been asked to cut our budget by about half for H. Two, um, so that you know you, you're going to see this. This is one of the first things I thought about myself. You know, um, if you can cut something really quick, it's going to be that type of exposure. It's going to be your own promotion potentially. If you're shut down, you're not doing business. Why are you promoting yourself to the same degree? Maybe that's an easy way to cut costs and reel in those costs. For Google, why not? We'll check in. Google fared okay during this, but not as strong as some of the other FANG stocks. Google gonna open a bit negative this morning. After being at 1276, the market's up about 1%. Google's down about 12 to 14 dollars. And for some longer context for Google, you see from 1532 down to a thousand, we're back towards the middle of that range. Uh, for some context here in terms of how far we've retraced. So you see that we're sitting at about 50%, right? Give or take, and we have been since about April 14th. But you compare this with, now we know Microsoft is, uh, excuse me, we know Amazon is through the roof. But even Microsoft, you look at, it's gotten back probably 78% or 61% at least. Yes, bouncing around in between the 618 and the 786 since about that same day, whereas Microsoft is still stuck down at about the 50%, uh, excuse me, Google's still stuck down at the 50%. Apple not faring as well as Microsoft as well. When you look at where we've been to the pop we've gotten, that low, we did make it up to the 618. So a little bit stronger than Google potentially in terms of Google, again, flirting with the 50% line, getting back 50% of the losses. Apple flirting between 50 and 61.8. You had Microsoft jumping around between 61 and 78%. And then maybe the two giants of them all, Netflix, uh, through the moon um, for context there, right? I mean, this is where, you know, you had the fall off in a company like Google and you've only gotten back 50% of the gains. Well, if you did that in Amazon, you had the fall off here, 50% of the gains would get you back to 1905. And you have Amazon this morning opening at above 2400. Netflix, some similar bullish action. Talk about that run, right? We were at about 390 before the coronavirus shutdown took place. The market sold off everything below 300. We were at one point. Netflix out with their earnings recently, still pulling back a bit at 426.70. So they're your fang stocks. Check in on Disney, just on the heels of the Netflix. Disney shares, Disney, really a tough woe here. I mean, you want to talk about what have we gotten back on this stock, right? What are we at here? You're barely touched a 382 retracement, 107.66, and we're really only about 23 to 25% off of that pullback. Some tough action on Disney. Other news going on, a week from yesterday. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. Tom will be doing a Timing the Trade webinar. Six hours of education, 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. A lunch break in between there. All of it's gonna be archived. That'll be on your members page. You can watch it. Maybe you don't have all day to go uh, 
to this webinar. Maybe you got to run a couple errands in the morning. Maybe you got to pick the kids up or the grandkids up uh, in the afternoon. But you can be in there all day in the trading room and you can come back, watch the archive whenever you'd like. He hasn't done one of these in a few years. You get a physical copy of his book, Timing the Trade. That will be mailed to you. You get a month of his Market Insights newsletter. That starts the moment you sign up. And uh, yeah, I encourage you to check it out a week from yesterday on the front page and open house as well. We got a great turnout for the open house started at the end of last month. We're going to run it through the end of April. So you got one more week in the open house as well. Check out the Tigers Den. Great to see a lot of old names in there they haven't seen in a while. Some great action in the Tigers Den. In terms of other stories out there with stocks, we'll finish it up with Edward Life Sciences. Earned a buck 51 a share for its latest quarter, beating estimates by 18 cents a share. Medical products makers revenue also topping forecast. The company lowered its forecast for the year, however, saying COVID-19 pandemic will have its biggest effect. That symbol EW. We're going to have to zoom this in a bit. That's your longer time frame. You see the acceleration from 240 to 150 to 220. And we're going to open a bit higher this morning at about 237. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be coming back, finish up the program, see what else we have on tap for Friday trading. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. we got about 35 minutes to go until that opening bell. S&P is up 26 points right now, jumping over to crude. Crude at $17.18, quite a far cry from where we were Tuesday, $6.50. Uh, checking in on the USO, lots of headlines and action for the USO this week. People really learning how ETFs, and especially this ETF, in particular operates and uh, just be aware oil funds near implosion latest market wackiness leave traders scratching their heads uh, retail investors plowing into this just a remarkable turn I read an article yesterday about professional shorting this in epic fashion uh, because being aware in the long in the long run when you are rolling from the front month to future months and there's a huge contango that is a very very bearish proposition that eventually leads to losses and as you can see that fall off from eleven dollars and fifty cents to two dollars and change we're talking about over the period of about two months let alone the drop off even from april 3rd from six to two dollars and thirty cents at a time when retail investors on robin hood it was like the most traded most owned uh etf out there maybe potentially um quite a story shaping up there that i'm sure we'll read more about in the weeks to come Verizon out with their numbers, so they beat on earnings per share. $1.26 versus looking for $1.22. Revenue for the wireless carrier falling 1.6% to $31.6 billion from a year earlier. It lost 68,000 phone subscribers who pay a monthly bill in the first quarter amid lockdowns that closed 70% of its stores. It led to a significant drop in customer activity and device volumes in the quarter. Analysts expected Verizon to just gain 100 subscribers for the quarter. So they lost 68,000. The company also cut its full year adjusted earnings per share outlook to between a growth of 2% and a fall of 2%. And it was looking for 2 to 4% growth. Either way, checking in on Verizon shares. We covered that before, but a bump to 57, and this morning, we're pretty even right now at 57.39 still. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Larry Pesvento coming up live with Trade What You See at 9 o'clock. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom, live trading all Friday, live trading education at TFNN. Stay tuned. <laughs>